Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on Stamparia's Cosmo Infinity and we're going to um, lay out the cover. So this is from an eight, the 8x8 eight eight, and what I did was cut off the edges here and then I popped the back with some chipboard. So I didn't trim it down. Uh, did I? Let me double check. Wait a minute. I'm sorry, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I trimmed it down to about eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And this album is gonna be a little bit smaller. It's eight by eight. Um, and the reason I made a mistake when I made my album. So the only change um, to the tutorial is it's a, um, a half inch narrower and shorter. Otherwise, everything else is the same. Instead of eight and a half by eight and a half, it's eight by eight. This is still two and a half inches, and of course, you'll shorten that to eight. The pocket pages can, will uh, remain eight by eight, as in the eight and a half and eight by eight and a half. So that doesn't change. So it's just a slight change in the cover of the ch in the chipboard in the cover. Nothing else internally will change. <clears throat> So I made this, uh, I cut, trimmed this down to eight and a quarter and by eight and a quarter because I wanted to cut this circle out and then have these peek out from underneath. And I wanted there, instead of it to look like that, I wanted there to be some overlap. So that is why I made it eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. Mm, yeah. So these corners are going to go flat on the cover, one layer of chipboard behind the image that I cut out, and it's very easy to follow on the print itself. Okay, now I'm going to put something in here, hold it open, and I'm going to trim off this little bit. So that's going to overlap just barely. So this just barely fits on eight by eight. It's actually a little bit, a little bit big. So I might actually have to take a little bit off. I can see it's hanging over the edge here and um, that that'll be an issue or could be an issue when you're opening up the album. So I may make that just a little bit smaller, which I can still do because I left a little bit of an edge all the way around inside the chipboard. At any rate, this is going to go down like so. And for the moment, I'm gonna leave it sized as is. I'm lining up the print here. Here we go, it goes like that. Okay. Actually, when I turned it, it fits. 
So now that it's lined up with the way the print was and the trees are going straight up, that's basically it. This came from the collection pack and I just fussy cut it out. It's got a print on both sides. I believe I'm going to set him here at the moon. This also came from the collection pack and it's a replica of this moon, but it's a little bit smaller. And so I'm going to double mat that moon so that it's coming up off the page as well. There's one layer of chipboard behind it. I think I'm going to add another piece of chipboard. I save all my pieces uh, that I trim off when making albums. They always come in handy. You can also use uh, pop dots. I prefer the chipboard. It just makes it feel more rigid uh, and less likely to snag on anything. I'm going to line up the prints and put it down. And then I'm going to take a few minutes and decide if I'm going to size down the circle just a little bit. I haven't decided yet. But this is essentially what the cover is going to look like. It's pretty pretty straightforward. It's, it's very pretty. I don't think it needs a lot of uh, layering because it's already so pretty. The um, I am going to cut this down. I've decided that. So I'm going to cut this down a little bit. And when I do, I'm going to make a decision about whether or not to double mat it instead of just single mat. Um, yeah, I'm going to give that some thought. When I come back, I'll share with you what my decision was and let you know um, how to replicate it. Be back in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back. So I did cut this down a little bit. And if you decide to do that, be careful because one of the things that happened is now I'm exposing a little bit more black here than I had, had intended, but it fits nicely. And then I selected this pattern to go on the spine in the back, which is the reverse side of this image well one of the one of the images has this printed and I'm actually adding mine so it's gonna be a little bit different um, and that's because I'm using a background and a collection pack so this image is in the backgrounds without the wolf and I cut this out of the collection pack so you can I hadn't realized that Knowing that now, I would have used this print and doubled up anyway, but it's going to look essentially the same, except for the difference would be what the image is going to look like from the side. You're going to barely see this animal behind it, and here you're going to see the tree. So he's been popped, and then I double popped his, his two feet because they're going to hang slightly off the image down here. I popped this. I'm going to go ahead and add... The wolf and then I'm gonna do the um, spine and the back I hope everybody's doing good we seem to be coming out of our June gloom we'll see usually by uh, around one the Sun starts peeking out So I'm sort of placing his feet right here on what looks kind of like a brick wall or a stone wall, to be more specific. I've also backed um, with cardstock two tags, and these tags are going to go right here. And I don't know if you can see it, but Nala just stuck her nose in. <laughs> so this one has a piece of chipboard. The other one is going to lay flat on top of it at a slight angle like so. Oops, that's from the side. So I like this. I love you to the moon and back. I used to say that to my son all the time. It's still true. I just don't say it as often. Okay, now where's the larger piece? What did I do with it? Oh, maybe I put it back. I have a habit of doing that. It's like laying there. Yeah. So this is 12 inches, so I split two and a half. The rest is going to come around here, and I'm going to trim it to fit. And I think it's pretty close, but I'm probably going to have to look at it again. Looks like I need to trim this down a bit. So 
So I'm just laying it next to this. So this will be a continuous line. Take a little bit off. Okay, I'll test it, ink it, and lay it down. And I believe that this one, this image that actually had the wolf on it that I'm using for the back is um, from the collection pack and this one was from the patterns. And when I said that, I just want to repeat myself. Okay, now I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to shorten this just a little bit. Time, I'll ink it and we'll lay it down. That looks good. I've mentioned this before, but I like to go from the center to the outsides when I'm using my powder puff. And the reason is when you go this way, end to end, you have um, a higher risk of stabbing the corner into your sponge and kind of tearing it up. So just a quick tip. Also, if you're new to the channel, I know we've picked up a few new subscribers. Um, the way I organize my projects is into a playlist. And the playlist is named for the paper collection that I'm doing the project in. So this will be Cosmo Infinity. And um, in that playlist, what you'll find um, is the walkthrough, the base album build, and that'll be followed by the individual page adaptations, which means the interactive elements and the pockets, as well as adding the designer layers. Those following videos, um, are there'll be multiples and they are based on page so you never have to go to um, a video and look for a particular page um, each video of the of the um, build process is a page in and of itself so what i mean by that is page one will have its own video page two will have its own video start to finish um, and that's kind of how i organize my projects in the description of the project, the first thing you're going to come across is the material list. Um, these are the designer papers used in the project, as well as any ephemera um, or chipboard or anything, or even flowers, if I'm using flowers. That'll all be in the description. And then if you are actually in the uh, material list, if you continue to scroll down, then you'll find the cut list. And the cut list doesn't include the base album build. There's a separate video for that. And in that, you'll find the cut list for the base. For the interactive elements like the flaps and the pockets, it'll be in the page videos. I organized it that way so that I could reuse my base album builds and then um, only change the interactive elements. So there is a playlist just for base album builds if you just want to build the base and, you know, 
add your own flaps and pockets. Um, there's a playlist that has several um, bass album builds uh, by different sizes, going starting at six by six, going up to uh, I think seven by eleven is the widest. Um, eight by ten. Some are portraits, some are landscapes. So there's lots of stuff to look at just for base album builds, even if you don't want to follow along with some of these designers. So I wanted to share that with you because I do know that I had a couple new, new um, uh, viewers out there and I try to pop that in every three or four months uh, to, to pick up the new people. So if you have any questions for sure, leave a comment and I'll answer it. Um, or you can go on over to scrapandcreate.com and leave an email over there. Either way, I'll respond. Um, as quick as I can. I've been pretty, pretty lax about responding to video comments lately. I kind of got off my game for a little bit. So I'm going to try to do better. If you have um, an urgent question, if you're stuck on something in a project, go to uh, scrapandcreate.com. Um, those emails are a little easier for me to get to. There's the volume's not the same as uh, the responses in YouTube. So there could be a hundred I like it's and I have to kind of weed through that to find the one where there's a specific question I need to answer for you. So again, try both. Um, and I'll do what I can to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. This is Cosmos Infinity and we have just completed the cover. I like to do the cover first sometimes so they don't accidentally cut through these beautiful papers and then later on figure out I don't have a good plan for the cover. But from this point on, I'm gonna set this aside and we'll work the pages individually. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back soon with page one. Hi everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are going to finish up the cover by doing the liners and so I've already done the back liner which is a large whoops I haven't I've got to um, add some paper there which is a large pocket and a flap and we're going to build the, the front one together so the pocket is now remember I mentioned this in one of my other videos I decided well I didn't decide but on error I made this eight by eight instead of eight and a half by eight and a half so it's still square, the pocket pages still fit. So these measurements for the liner are the only thing that would be slightly different if it was eight and a half by eight and a half. So for the purpose of this album, this is eight and seven eighths, eight and, eight and seven eighths by six and one eighth. So eight and seven eighths by six and one eighth. <clears throat> and then, oops. Flap is three and five eighths, three and five eighths by seven and seven eighths. I said eight and seven eighths, but it is, oh yeah, it has to be an inch bigger because we have the two flanges. So seven and seven eighths, eight and seven eighths, you're gonna score half an inch on three sides to form your pocket. And then here you're gonna score a half inch on the three and five eight inch side. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Now, if you do have an eight and a half by eight and a half, this is going to be nine and three eighths by six and five eighths. Nine and three eighths by six and five eighths. And then this will be eight and three eighths. So you need it to be, um, a little bit smaller than the width of the chipboard so it doesn't get hung up here in the spine. Okay, so now you have measurements for both. And again, mine is eight by eight, which you can do and you'll see what it looks like. So the only the only reason I did eight and a half by eight and a half was to protect the pages so that the chipboard's always gonna be what's st sticking out the furthest. And then when you have inserts inside your pocket pages or your signatures, um, they're gonna, uh, they're going to be, they'll rest outside the line of the book or outside the edge of the chipboard because, uh, well, they don't have to, but normally I leave a half inch hanging out past the pocket to make it easy to grab. And this way, if I don't want it hanging out, I'm going to have to reach inside the pocket to pull it out. So what I think I'm going to do is make it the same size as the pocket and then put little tabs so the only thing sticking out will be a tab. Okay, so the pocket's in. 
And I went ahead and put this paper down because I was afraid I was going to repurpose it. And I put a magnet on here to remind myself not to cover it before I add a magnet on the pocket, which if you watch me for very long, you know I tend to do. It's an easy thing to forget. You know what, I need to turn it around so I can see the edge. We'll get that out of our field of vision, as well as this. This is just a sample. So this is gonna go flush with the edge of the book itself. And then you can see here, I've got some room between this, um, the hinge on the spine and the pocket and its flap. Okay, now we're gonna put the um, magnet, the mate magnet down. I'm, I'm having a hard time getting my magnets to split for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna use a dot. I don't have a lot of room to work with. I like glue dots, but these magnets are so strong. Sometimes it just brings the other magnet over with it. Okay, so that's done. So let's go ahead and add this. Oh, I forgot to mention, all these papers are from the 12 by 12 background pack. Dry fit this real quick. Oh, it's too big. I need to cut it down. I don't know why I did that. Oh, I know why I did it. I was off a half inch on my pocket, that's why. Oh well. So this is yeah, a half inch off, that's why. So I did six and one eight instead of six and five eighths to accommodate for the um, the flange down here. And that's okay. Just. I should have made it a half inch longer and then we would have had more overlap between the flap and the pocket and it would have made um, installing this magnet a little easier. So now because of the limited amount of paper around the magnets on the top and the bottom, it's you just have to worry about the paper buckling and not adhering right here. So just pay uh, special attention to that. Make sure you get glue or tape there. All right, enough blabbing. I need to trim this down. Seems like too much, let me double check. It is, okay. Let's see how this is. Mm, I'm gonna put something up here so I can see the edge of the pocket. I was talking to my dog and you guys. Hope everybody's doing good. It's 4th of July weekend. I think we want to hang out at home, but I'm not real sure. We kind of went back and forth on whether or not we were going to travel. Which could happen at the last minute if my husband gets bored. Hence why I'm working on this. Friday because I'd like to get it released if we decide to leave town before we uh, before we leave. Anyway, all right, all right, all right. sure I've got some glue on the other side of that magnet.
looks like it's down. Okay, I need to uh, take a break, find the uh, inside pocket liner and the back of the flap, and then we'll finish up on the inside liners. Be back in just a moment. Hey everyone, it's Stephanie. I'm back and I chose my patterns for the inside pocket liner and the B side of the flap. I've already glued this side down. Um, we'll go ahead and put this together. And again, make sure that you're getting glue all the way around your, um, your magnet so that you don't have a little buckle here. It might be a little bit of a challenge, but pay close attention to that. And then I haven't done it yet because um, I'm going to do my inserts at the end based on what paper I have left over. But as a placeholder, I am going to put a six by six. <clears throat> six by seven insert into these pockets. And I want it to, it's going to be taller than it is wide. I want my insert to come up about that high. So I'm just going to cut two six by seven inserts, place them in the pocket as a reminder to cover them later. You might want to do the same or you can wait until um, I figure out what my paper is gonna be because there is a chance that it might change size based on what the scraps are. I'm gonna get all my pages covered first and at the moment I've only got three of eight pages planned. If you count these, it would be 10. So I have five of 10. Uh, one, two, three, yeah. So we still have uh, a few to go. And there are the inside pages, which tend to be uh, more complex. So they take up more paper than a simple pocket. that make sure I've got glue all the way around it mm -hmm. I'm just making sure that there see there's a bubble there so I'm gonna put a little bit more glue in there and try again oops you guys probably know what time it is based on stinker I'm gonna push that glue inside just with my hands. And we'll try again. That's not the end of the world if there's a gap, but just a spot where something might get stuck and snag the paper. Okay, looks like it's good now. Just gonna hold that for a second. And then there is the front and back liners. Of course, our cover. So we're all done with the cover, spine, back, and the inside liners. Okay, the rest of the focus will be on the inside of the book. I'll be back soon with more. <laughs> 